Welcome back guys and this lecture we're going to be looking at decision making with if else if statements so again this is section three lecture six so let's talk about comparison operators what are comparison operators and how are they used well for comparing numbers Perl has the logical comparison operators that remind you of algebra. So if you look at these symbols, we can use these to compare numbers in Perl. So we have the less than sign, the less than or equal to sign, the equal to sign, the greater than or equal to sign, the greater than sign, and then lastly we have the not equal to sign. And each of these returns a true or false value. So we can use these to compare numbers in Perl. So for comparing strings, Perl has an equivalent set of string comparison operators, which look, look like little funny words. So if you look at the bottom, we have the less than, which is LT. We have the less than or equal to, which is LE. We have the EQ, which is, which is, of course, equal to. We have the greater than or equal to. We have the GT, which is greater than. And we have the NE, which resembles the N, which resembles not equal to. So again, we have to use these comparison operators for strings only with the letter characters and, of course, our algebraic comparison operators for numbers and I'll do some examples for you guys as well and vice versa so these com these compare so these compare two strings character by character when we want to compare strings so let's talk about the if control structure so once you can compare two values you'll probably want your program to make decisions based upon that comparison. So let's say if we want to know if four is less than six, which it is, we can carry out a task. And of course, if that decision is false, we can do something else. So Perl has an if control structure that looks like this. The keyword starts with if, and then we pass the name of a string value here. GT, which we looked at, which is greater than Fred. And of course, if that's true, we'll go ahead and print out a statement saying the name comes before Fred in sorted order. And what Perl does is that it looks at ASCII characters with strings. So they all have a representation decimal number. So for example, the letter A is 65. The capital letter A is 65. And of course, with the lowercase letters, it's a higher value. So it's saying, let's say if, if name was A, so it'll be 65 is less than a number from the lowercase, which is true. So it'll print this. And you guys can look at the ASCII to decimal um, conversions as well that represents each character. So let's talk about the else if control structure. So it does the same thing, but it's an alternative expression if the if expression is false. So always remember guys, it's else if without the E. So it's E-L-S if. Always remember to drop the E after the S. So if the if control structure fails again, you can use the else if without the E after the S structure to check another expression to see if it's true. And what it looks like is okay, for example, if 50 is less than 20, which is false. It's going to skip this block of code, which is in comment. This code will be skipped. So what happens is that it goes down to our else if statement. So it's saying, hey, is 50 greater than 20? And of course it is. So it prints our statement, 50 is greater than 20. So let's do some examples now. So we start with our if control structure. So Let's set up our if statement. So the keyword if followed by parentheses, skip a line and let's put our curly braces. And at the bottom on the next line, we type our else if statement. And we're just gonna leave the parentheses empty for right now. 
and I'll show you our last default else statement with the E. Okay, so let's try some numbers first. So if we type is 30 less than 40, let's see what happens here. Let's print out a statement. This is true. Okay, and let me just put a comment here because we will, we'll worry about this later. So we'll keep our else statement and let's say if our if statement evaluates the false, it's going to go to our default else statement. So if anything all uh, fails, then it's gonna go to our else statement, which is by default. It will run our code within our curly braces if all else, else if statements eva evaluate the false. And I'll just put default for here followed by two new line characters okay so what we want Perl to do is evaluate is 30 less than 40 and it's true so it's gonna print our print statement here this is true so if we go up to run click run script exactly this is true so it evaluated to true so let's say if this was false. So if we use the greater than sign, so 30 is greater than 40, which is false. So it's going to skip this block of code and default to our else statement. So if we click run, click script, and it goes to our default because this evaluated to false. So, and let's just say for another number is Let's try the greater than or equal to sign. So let's just put is 30 greater than 30? No, but 30 is equal to itself. So it's going to print this is true. So let's do that. Click run, run script. And congratulations, this is true. So of course, just like al algebra, you're just comparing it to numbers with our logical mathematical uh, operations here with these symbols. So let's try some strings now. So I'll type in double quotation marks. And I'm going to ask. <clears throat> and of course, remember when using strings, we have to use the letter characters. So we're saying is a less than is uppercase lay a lower is less than lowercase a. And of course it is because Perl evaluates the letter a to its decimal value, which is 65. And of course, lowercase a is in its hundreds, so it's going to evaluate to true. So we run the script, and there we have it. This is true. Because in our ASCII to decimal character set a has a lower value than the lowercase letter so if we do is a greater than that's gt lowercase a and of course it's not because 65 is not greater than 100 plus so it's going to default to our default value so if we click run run script it goes to our default so let's just say if that is not happening and that eva evaluates the false, let's check our else if statement. So we can do is, is B, let's say greater than or equal to A. So of course A is 66 in the decimal form and B is 65, so B is greater then a so we should print out another statement let's put this is true again just to make it look a little bit different so it's going to check this because our top one is false so it's going to default to our else if and print this statement because b is greater than a so we run it this is true again 
So pretty much that's that's it in a in a nutshell. If this evaluates to true our first if statement, then it prints our prints our block of code. If not, we can actually put multiple else if statements and it checks our conditions and whichever one is true, it's going to execute that block of code and then it's going to skip the rest of the else if else statements as well. So again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know and I'll try to answer them the best way I can and I'll see you guys in our next lecture.